Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today is a different type of a video. It's one of my tests video thingy. And this is something that I've been in meaning to do for a very, very long time. One of the questions that frequently arises with potential users or people who are just interested in e ink devices is how does the white of the background of the screen compared from device to device? Now, I've been testing these things uh, in a relatively controlled fashion occasionally, but I never gave it a full on kind of attention thingy to do like a very controlled test and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that with the emergence of uh, E-Ink Kaleido version one and now version two on a Nova 3 color, that it would be an important thing to actually create a gradient or basically a palette between all of the different devices that I've been testing and that I currently have so that we can see how do they compare to each other and how does the e-ink screen background whiteness or brightness compare between different devices. So I decided to give it a go. In order to actually obtain meaningful results, something that's uh, comparable and that will show nuances, because there we are talking about very, very fine nuances in a couple of cases, um, I had to set up a controlled environment. And that just meant that I need to set up the camera in a specific super manual way so that everything is completely fixed between the shot from shot to shot. Fixed ISO, fixed shutter speed, fixed exposure, fixed white balance, everything exactly as it should be so that the photographs are perfectly equal between each of the things. Of course, that means the uh, lighting conditions, the shadows, the angles, everything. This is the very first time that I've actually set it up like this and it was very interesting to compare the results. I used a blank piece of paper as a measurement, basically like the brightest point to kind of reference out how it looks like under these conditions and I'm going to be comparing the whiteness or the background of each of the device's screens to that blank piece of paper. Once I had all the photographs, then I zoomed in and cropped out to the empty area to actually get the uh, color. Then I would desaturate the uh, color so that we can just have grayscale values. From that, I averaged out each one to get a precise value, like what's the average value of the background itself, and then filled out a palette with those colors. So once I've had that, then I was able to kind of measure them out, rearrange them, and here is the final palette and the comparison between the devices. First, I'm going to show you a palette with the grid because it's important. And the devices are lay laid out from the brightest, which is the paper itself, not the Quirk Logic paper, but the, the actual sheet of white paper. Uh, white paper, by the way, is never white. It's kind of, uh, it, it, it has a grayness to it. So I tried to match that kind of grayness. Uh, I don't know how it's going to translate on YouTube with the compression and all that kind of stuff. It's very likely going to go off. But um, yeah, the, the comparisons are relative to that. So um, I tried to kind of match that and the results are fairly accurate from what I could see when I was comparing the uh, screen itself to the image that I can see on the screen. And as we can see, uh, the brightest devices in this list are Kindle Paperwhite and Poke 2. They're very, very close to each other, but Kindle Paperwhite was the brightest one. Then we get to this area of starting with Mobiscribe Origin and all the way to Note Air, where for all intents and purposes, they are pretty much identical. So Mobiscribe Origin, Lightbook P10, Remarkable 2, Super Note A5X, A6X, and of course A6 and A5 because they're identical, and Note Air, they all fit into this same kind of uh, category. And it's very interesting that they all get the exact same type of a number. Then uh, we have Nova 2, Quirk Logic Paper, a little bit darker. Then we also get a bit more darker as well with Kobo H2O and the old uh, and the Kindle, the, the cheap one that I really, really dislike. That Kindle is also way down. And surprisingly for me, uh, out of the normal actual uh, range of the devices, Remarkable One is actually the darkest. Now, these differences are very, very small, but they are there. The difference between Remarkable One and Two is negligible, and to the naked eye, it's really, really difficult to actually see. However, when I did a controlled examination of these colors, then the Remarkable One is actually darker and considerably darker than Remarkable Two. Go figure. And then we go to the actual point and the purpose of this test, because the whole reason why I wanted to do this was to compare and to demonstrate just how much darker 
the blank of the screen or the white of the screen is on the Kaleido technology. And as you can see, Pocket Boot Color and uh, Poke 2 Color score lowest. They are definitely the darkest ones, and that's Kaleido 1. And Anova 3 Color is quite a bit brighter than the old Kaleido. So that's a good thing to actually see that the Kaleido 2 or the new Kaleido screen is brighter than the older one. However, if we put it into context with the rest of the devices, that's not saying much. So while it is brighter than the super dark and really, really bad Kaleido 1 screen that was used on Pocket Boot Color and Poke 2 Color, Kaleido 2 screen, or I don't know if they call it Kaleido 2 or the new Kaleido screen, either way, the new one that's used now in 7.8 inch device 10.3 inch devices and it's rolling out everywhere this is how it stacks up so better than the older one but still when you compare it to a regular e-ink screen really really a lot darker than they are and it's not as if the uh, general e-ink screens were bright to begin with so that's something that we'll discuss in a later video but i just wanted to kind of summarize this palette and uh, see a quantifiable comparison between the whiteness of the backgrounds of these devices and here is the shot of that palette but without the grid itself so that you can actually see how small of a difference it is and for me it's actually quite interesting to see this palette with grid lines and without grid lines it's quite an interesting thing to actually see how they stack up and how they measure up against each other and you can see pure white in the lowest right corner that's just a measurement to kind of see how off white the paper is compared to a complete white uh uh, color. For me, this was very insightful and very interesting to do, um, especially because I was planning to do something like this for a very, very long time, but I never kind of got enough time or didn't think that I had enough devices to compare. And now finally, I have quite a few devices to compare this with. And as I said, the main thing was to see how does the new Kaleido screen compare to the old Kaleido screen and how does the e-ink color panel which is the Kaleido screen and the technology itself how it compares to the traditional e-ink screen in a quantifiable way. I hope you found this interesting and I hope that you find it useful for whatever your uh, decisions may be when you're doing research and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was certainly useful and fun for me to do so I'm sharing it with you. I hope you liked the video. If you did please like and subscribe and consider dinging off the notification bell to get notified when new videos on my deep guide come out. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!